Boom, baby, we are live. Welcome to Interview with the Man, episode 499, where I am joined by what I like to call the Wisdom Panel. Um, guys, we have a really good show today, and we're going to be talking with these gentlemen about some serious, serious wisdom. Uh, overall, just what I believe to be timeless wisdom and not not to get too uh, dramatic about it, but that 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 is, in my opinion, kind of fading away, and people are losing their um, losing this greatness that is uh, before you today on this panel. Um, these are all gentlemen that will be involved in the Inner Game Healing Summit. Don't forget, on February twenty fourth, we are going live with five days enrollment. So. You want to go here to innergamehealing.com, put your email address in right here, click get on the waiting list. There's 215 people on the waiting list. I had a good feeling about this one. Um, and two of the speakers today will also be speaking at the Intergame Healing schedule right here, March 1st, me, Intermasculine. Yesterday, you saw us live here talking about the five types of subconscious trauma. We are going to be talking about identifying your subconscious trauma. So we're going to help you put a think, finger on it, help you figure out what's in your way and how to get out of your way. Um, March 2nd, hypnosis for men, Ryan Christensen, my good friend, uh, talking about limiting beliefs and the subconscious mind, Paul apex mindset, March 3rd. I mean, literally a genius. He's gonna be talking about creating your new healthy identity. March 4th, as you can see, the, the man beneath me here, Wraith is going to be with his brand, the masculine journey, talking about enhancing your mental state and changing your self-talk and the man who needs no introduction, Mr. Red pill Thor will talk about emotional durability. All of this and more. Everything's starting at 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. We're going to put some wisdom into you guys. And we have a new member and the newest general in the Hot Dude Army, a friend of mine that we just kind of connected over Instagram, a man who has generously donated $100 Super Chat to me before, uh, Mark here from MarksInspiration.com. Mark, what do you want to just... Tell, uh, give a quick little introduction about who you are and how you've been involved in the Masculine Empowerment Network and everything like that. Yeah, I'd be glad to. It's an honor to be here. Um, I just started this uh, YouTube channel about about two, almost two years ago. I guess it'll be in April, and then I connected with you, John. I guess on Instagram somehow, and uh, we got to talking. and And I like to. What I do is I help people. Uh, to find the answers they have within themselves. And that goes to the inner game, what we talked about in our healing, different things like that. I believe everybody has the answers within themselves, but sometimes we need to reflect it off of someone. Um, I just help people get those answers that they already have. I help them discover them within themselves. Beautiful. I love it. Um, Mark is quite the badass, uh, you know, former fighter, done a couple of cage fights himself entrepreneur self-made man um we're joined also by uh mr mr wraith here wraith you wanted to tell the folks a little bit about yourself a little background and all the wisdom you bring to the table i really think you're one of the most uh underrated people we have in the masculine empowerment network and i can't wait for you to like put out regular content and get things going well as <clears throat> as you know i work full-time so uh, this is something I do uh, just to help uh, young men out. Uh, I am a NLP practitioner. I have, I can do hypnosis, uh, and I do a lot of career counseling. That's where I started with working with John and stuff. Is my day job is working in helping people find jobs and writing resumes and those kind of things. Uh, but usually, when I start doing that process with people. I find out there's a lot of other things holding them back from making the money they're supposed to be making or moving on in jobs. So that's how I kind of got into uh, doing the counseling on self-talk and those kind of things. And I, I do a little bit of coaching on the side. And um, beyond that, I did, uh, let's see, a little, little bit of time in the military, retired military, retired uh, cop. And now I do this. So Badass. A legacy of a badass. And then the man... The myth, the legend, Mr. Red Pill Thor. Just, just, just brag a little bit. Go for it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, sure. Hey, I'm 59 years old. I am Thor. That's my real name. And uh, been in this with John for a few years. A part of that, I was a power lineman. I was the guy that flies on helicopters, puts a steel suit on, and climbs out on 
half a million volt lines and keep the power grid going in America. And I taught young men how to do that. And what I found when teaching those young men is that at least I'm teaching them to be safe, to keep their limbs, not get killed, not fall off of a tower, a pole. What I found is about 30% of the time I was counseling them on their personal lives, on giving them the mindset and giving them tools and weapons so they could overcome and defeat life's stressors and challenges in order to, well, live the dream, which is all of our birthrights. And so I'm continuing on here with you, John. Awesome. I love it. I love it. I love it. Um, so guys, uh, obviously the wisdom panel, um, you know, the, the three of you, I personally, this is a bias, but I personally understand the value of guys who have lived a lot of life and who lived it while holding a masculine frame, which all three of you guys absolutely did. And I think all three of you <clears throat> kind of look around and, <laughs> and look at these new young guys like, why is everybody such a pussy? <laughs> um, but uh, I just think that the, the wisdom that you guys bring to the table is really, really priceless um, because, you know, getting getting old ain't no trophy. But getting old and living a good life is, and I believe all of you guys, not that you're old, but you know, you're, you're, um, <laughs> you're older and, uh, you know, you, 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 you've lived life and there's a lot to be said for that because the experience you have, nobody can buy. We obviously are, um, all raised in America and we kind of see what is happening to the younger generation and, how basically self-esteem has kind of gone out the window, especially with men. What do you what do you guys generally think about the concept inner game, masculine self-esteem? Um, what do you just think about that in general and, and the, the importance of it more importantly? Well, I'll go first then. Hey, um, I like what I like your introduction there. Men have gone soft, and I think that part of the reason for that, John, is look, the default for a human being that's born today is female. And in ages past, and I think these men would agree, I hope they would, we would take the young boys and try to make them men as fast as possible. And part of doing that is teaching them some stoicism, teaching them about themselves that nobody's coming to rescue them and teach them to be self-sufficient. And, and that gives a lot of, I mean, you called us older, but really we're, all of us are forged and tempered by experiences in life right and that's what we try to give the young men early on i think that's missing in some ways we've talked about this in the past with the rites of passage that were designed to do exactly that and bring these boys and young men up to a standard by which men all men live by we used to have that very strongly in our society and it is somewhat shifted uh some of it for the good a lot of it for the bad mm -hmm. so, what would you let me add, i'm gonna bounce a question off of you thor what would you say are the benefits of having rock solid inner game and what are the downsides of not actually having it yeah indecisiveness or too much decision making you you spin in your head everybody has this little voice in their head and if you can't control that little voice you will be impulsive so i would say impulsivity and you can see that across all of society right now it's mm -hmm. it's give it to me now i want it now it's almost like if you don't have control of that inner game, you're prone to throwing temper tantrums, essentially, yep. you know, whether it's external or it's internal. Right. And it, it, it's huge, especially when it comes down to the key principles, and that's being able to validate yourself versus accepting external validation. There are people that go throughout life right now, John, mm -hmm. that do nothing but seek external validation. That's fantastic. External validation is like a, it's like a battery. It's like buying a little battery, right? Yep. You get this battery full of energy from the outside. You can see it as an example with women that post their Instagram pictures and they get the likes. Those are little batteries, right? They come in. This is external validation. You get it. You use up that energy and then the battery's done. Well, maybe you can recharge it again, right? That is external validation. That's an analogy. What mm -hmm. men need now inside themselves is to build an electric generator. Mm -hmm. Electric generator represents self-validation you see yep. that's hard though be it a yeah. small pocket honda generator you have to put gas in right mm -hmm. if you have this generator and you can start it 
it will generate electricity and power for you. Now, you can take time and build a huge diesel generator, but it requires maintenance, fuel, oil, change of air filters, and knowledge of how to operate this thing and time to operate it at its maximum efficiency. Yep. And when you do, it generates enough power, and this is your self-validation, that actually you will start to see these batteries come to you to get charged. So it's kind of the esoteric take on it, but yep. that's kind of my take on how important inner game is. I want to I want to add to that. I'm I I discovered that concept for of self validation in fucking November, man. And I'm at 35 at the time. And I I didn't even realize cuz I'll 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 come to the altar and confess my sins first, right? I was using women and sex as external validation and I didn't even know it. Guys, I'm not even joking. I'm not trying to be theatrical. I'm not trying to get signups for the Inner Game Healing Summit or anything. I'm being, I'm being dead ass honest, guys. I, I had, I had found a video on YouTube and I would saw this concept of self validation. I was like, what the fuck is this hippie shit? And then I went and talked to Paul about it, and I talked to Ryan Fowler about it, and I thought to myself, holy shit. And the thing is, and in some areas of my life, I did, I did self validate. Business competence, right? Overall confidence in the streets, one-on-one -on -one confrontations, whatever the case may be. I didn't need to be like, I need to beat this guy's ass so I can have like, you know, external validation. I just, you know, you, you feel it. You know, you have that certain confidence. But I lacked in the feeling good about myself in regards to the opposite sex. And right. Wraith kind of pointed out to me when we talked. He says, well, you got a little bit of mommy issues. I was like, this motherfucker wants to fight. But then I, <laughs> then I looked up and I looked into it and I started reading. I was like, oh, fuck, he's right. And then you, you dig deeper and deeper and you, you start pulling out. But what Thor said is so true. First, you become your own generator. And yes, it takes maintenance. You got to change the oil. You got to change the spark plugs, whatever the case may be, right? <laughs> But once you do that, then other people start coming to you. And that's when you start building a life and building a community and teaching other people to become self-validating themselves. Uh, you gentlemen, any, any you gentlemen want to add on to that? Or what would you say? Well, I just want to make a comment about what, what you said about me. You know, yeah. John and I was having that conversation, and I tried to lead him to that. And I, you know, with John, John just finally said, fuck, just tell me what you're trying to say. I said, John, you got a little bit of mommy issues. Mm -hmm. You know, yep. and we talked about that a little bit and I agree with Thor a lot. And one of the things that I find that's lacking in men today is being able to focus. Mm. Okay. And that I, I don't, I think if some of it comes from their self-talk, but a lot of it comes from the fact that, you know, um, they got shiny object syndrome. Yeah. Oh yeah. You know, and it's just like when I'm working with young men today, I find that that is the hardest thing to do. I spend the first two months of any coaching trying to get them to focus on one thing. Yeah. And it, it doesn't, I let them choose what the one thing they want to focus on, but uh, there's just no, no ability to focus. And um, that's, that's troublesome to me because if you can't focus on something that's important to you, you know, how can you focus on something that's important to everyone else? And as part of men, we have a, we have a responsibility, you know, to uh, produce. And we're not just producing for ourselves; we're producing for society. Yep. And like I said, that's why you see so much failure in in young men today is because, like I said, the biggest thing I found is they don't have the ability to focus. They're so wrapped up in their own shiny objects and and looking for validation. You're right; they can't self validate. Because they're looking for it everywhere else. Yep. So, yep. I love the term self validation. We used to not call it that. We would call it building character. Right. But oh, it's yeah. essentially the same thing. So, when the, those terms are relatively new, you know, I mean, in, in this context, it, and it describes it so much better. I mean, obviously, I like my analogy because I'm a power lineman, power batteries generators. Anyway, it's great. It's well, great. And, and I think, you know, we, as we sit through and what Thor and I, We've been with you since gosh, 20, late 2018 or 2019. 19. 19 yeah. when I started. Yeah. Uh, and I was making a I put a joke in one of the things the other day about Whiteboard John. You know, <laughs> <and I> think, <laughs> I 
very many people remember that. But mm -hmm. uh, you know, like I said, it's it's the problems haven't changed. What's changed is uh, just even since nineteen, I see mm -hmm. more and more young men trying to seek that external validation. You know, and <clears throat> as they try to walk away from it, they just dive into it deeper. Mm -hmm. And when we talk about, you know, all them trying to heal from their, their past issues, um, they're doing it the wrong way. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And that's a huge mountain to overcome. Right. Without instruction. Let me tell you. I mean, the greatest of mine struggled with that without instruction. So, you know, definitely seek it out. Um, Mark, do you want to add in on that, partner? Yeah, I'd like to comment on that. Um, <clears throat> from the time we're born... At least nowadays, more so than when I was growing up, um, we are programmed to believe that we got to have this, we got to do this, we got to drink this, we got to eat this, et cetera, et cetera, to be okay, to be the man or to be the, the, the best or whatever it happens to be. With all the social media, the TV, the, what do they say about you get about 5,000 different advertisements uh, bombarded at you per day? So, what happens there is you grow up believing or programmed to believe that you have to have something outside of yourself to be okay, to be somebody, whether it be money, women, whatever it happens to be. And like you, John, I went through that same thing about 30 years old. I didn't realize either. I had, uh, I had a wife uh, in my twenties. Uh, I had two steady girlfriends. I had other girls I was sleeping with and I never realized that that was where I was getting my validation from. Okay. And then when, things kind of fell apart is like I couldn't even buy a date. It's like I kind of fell apart from the inside. It crumbled because everything was built up on this external validation from the women I had and everybody, you know, you're the man, you're the man. But when it all fell apart on the inside, it didn't matter. I wasn't the man. Everybody else thought I was, but I didn't believe I was because it was based on the women that I had. And as far as it, and I can see firsthand, we talked about the young men these days. Um, I have five, uh, well, I actually have six kids, 21 years old and under, five boys and a daughter. My daughter just turned 15. My youngest boy is 13. And we have a lot of kids over here, and there's so many kids that just don't have a clue about anything. Uh, they don't have a father in the home. If they do have a father in the home, uh, he's weak, and they don't know, half of them don't know how to shake hands. I taught my boys how to shake hands, how to look a man in the eye. I've taught them how to fight. Three of my boys work with me. My oldest did, but he went off and was working for someone else now. And there's really, it's really a lack of masculinity because there's no masculine role models. And yeah. like, I can't remember if it's Wraith or Thor, or both of them said, that's <laughs> one of the reasons I started doing this because these kids are lost. They have nobody. That's where when I was growing up, uh, when I was 15, I quit school and went to work. We would stand around the corner and drink beer, a bunch of us men. And then down the street, the older men were behind this uh, liquor store. They had a like a cave back there, and they all stood there and drank and talk as, talked as men. And when I was a kid, I was back there with them. So there was a lot of men getting together talking about masculine, manly things. It was just yeah. so different from now is where it's all feminine. A lot of it is feminization or feminized. or yeah. it's So that's kind of my take on all that. Emotionally. Yeah, yeah, feel your feelings. Be vulnerable. I believe in being vulnerable to my mentor or my best friend, but not to your woman. Or and you just can't. I don't believe that works well. Women don't want that. Mm, yeah, um, I think yeah that that really, I, I you know, <clears throat> it took me fucking hundreds of women's and making a bunch of money to realize like, oh shit, like I still kind of don't feel good about myself. You know, and I was using that as me and Ryan talked about yesterday, that toxic fuel. But <clears throat> once you get that inner game, that that real rock solid confidence where you just feel good about yourself, man, there's like is nobody can take shit away from you. You could die in your own fucking on your own hill and you'll be like, fuck it, I'm going to die. You know, you, you'll be OK with it. It's, it's, it's a, because it comes, from, it comes from inside of you. It's not something, and it doesn't necessarily have to be women. It can be anything. I remember I've done triathlons. I've boxed amateur. I've boxed professional, and I've had my own business since 85. And I remember one time I finished running about 10 miles. I was training for a, a one-mile race or a 5K or a marathon or something, 
And I said, you know, I probably run one more mile. And I had to laugh at myself. Will you be good enough then, Mark, if you run one more mile? <laughs> yeah, really. I mean, even though it was something I was doing it for myself, I was still, and you know, I have to win. I can't lose. If you win once and if you come second place the next time, that's not good enough. And that's all, once again, from external validation. I have to be, I have to be this, this guy that wins or nobody's going to think anything of me. You know? So you're never good enough because you're always, you're always raising the bar. Mm. Yeah. Um, I, I, I just, like I said, I, it's really, I think in the men's self-help place, um, this is something extremely overlooked. I know some like mainstream guys do it, but they do it like with like a blue pill kind of pussy way. And I think we need to really like men react with a very harsh punch in the face with reality. You know what I mean? We just like that's why I, I, I told the great. I was like, great. You're kind of dancing around the question. What the fuck is wrong with me? He's like, all right, you got mommy issues. I was like, OK, cool. You know, because I'm retarded sometimes. I need to get punched in the face with with reality because, you know, guys were sometimes we're so caught up in our belief systems and, our, and we're so like, you know, like horses with blinders on. And we, we can't really um, see our own fucking foot up our own ass. You know what I mean? We can't get out of our own way. And sometimes that's what the great thing about being a man. Because, I mean, how many of you guys have been direct with a woman before? And how, how did that work out? <laughs> you know, yeah. they cry. They can't handle it. But with a man, men appreciate it. We're like, well, that is the most logical way to communicate with me. And thank you so much. I think guys need this now more than ever. They think that they need like, you know, one more mile, one more rep, 10 more pounds on my bench press, yeah. you know, one yeah. more inch on my fucking bicep, you know, five more girls in, to fuck this month. And it's just like this endless black hole that can become like a toxic thing. And the thing is, once you do realize you're good enough, what's crazy is like your goals and everything come to you faster and easier. It's just you get out of your own fucking way. You know what I mean? Well, you feel like you deserve it. And you talk about that punching a man in the face. Yeah, love is not always a, oh, come here, honey, let me give you a hug. It's telling you what you, you know, I have friends today that tell me what I need to hear, not what I want to hear. Years ago, I only hung around with people who told me what I wanted to hear. But those aren't, you know, real love is telling your buddy, that, hey, you need to get off your ass and do something. Quit moping around, being depressed, and get up and do something. Mm -hmm. You know, maybe if you take some action towards your goals, you won't be so depressed. Mm -hmm. That's part of the problem here in the U.S. too. We have no adversity. People need adversity. So what they do is they create these things that I, I won't go into certain. I'm just going to talk about genders, but I'll stay away from that. But they yeah. create all they, they create all these things because they have no adversity. So they find these little. They're offended about everything, and they find these little things make mountains out of molehills. They create things so they can have adversity. As men, we need adversity. We need challenges. And if you don't create uh, constructive challenges, you will create crises which you're, where you're trying to get yourself out of something because you need some kind of challenge adversity. I think that's one of the reasons we have so much depression here and so many people on medication. Not that I'm against medication, okay? I've taken it in my life. But unless you work on the problem, the medication just deals with the symptom right. and maybe gets you to the point where you can start working on the issues and the problem. Once you get those out... You don't need usually you don't need the medication. I know you have to be careful about what you say about that. So, but you don't need that because the problem is inside of you. You fix that, then you're you'll be okay. Well, and I think I think young men they are they're separating um, that adversity. They're they're substituting it with drama. Yeah, yeah correct. The you know? Right here kind of ties into that super chat five dollar super chat. I noticed guys who grew up in single mothers really struggle later with stable long-term male relationships without drama there's a lot of a guy cattiness out there that's pretty right. fucking gay mm -hmm. right and, and that's what i noticed i, I noticed that a lot of a lot of these young men um <clears throat> on, on my um uh, facebook page i wrote about happiness and i i've wrote, written about struggle and stuff like that and we are made to struggle i agree all right <laughs> So if we can, if we everything that we're supposed to be struggling for is met, then we start looking for ways to struggle. Yeah, and that that creates drama. Mm. And way too many young men are into the drama. They they've totally bypassed the struggle portion because mm. they're not looking at how do they challenge themselves to be better them. You know, how do I be a better me? Mm. They they don't do that anymore. 
they're still living up to the expectations of what you were saying about what TV tells us we should be. Right. Okay. I don't give a shit what TV tells me I'm supposed to be. I am who I am. Yeah. They just want you to buy their product. That's right. their, their whole agenda is buy, consume, because they want you to consume. Well, and, that, and that's, that's because it's generating towards women, <clears throat> because women are the biggest consumers. And these young men are becoming, you know, the biggest consumers also because they're, they're acting like women. And like I said, without diversity, they substitute it with drama. And when you talk about, you know, trying to get them through that drama phase, uh, you work with, we, we all work with young men. It's like talking to my daughters. Yeah. But, you know, like, no, no, no. You know, you, you've got to make a decision. Stand by that decision. <clears throat> you know, mm. work through that decision failing and understand that, each failure creates opportunity. These guys don't get that. Mm. It, well, we're, we're taught in school that failure is is bad. Right. Oh, we man. all know that it's only by failing that you succeed, that you learn from it. Right. You know, everybody everybody wants to call like, oh, MLD, he's an overnight success. He's this, he's that. They didn't see me. Right. You guys, you know, I went from 2015 until January 2019 I got 800 fucking measly subscribers on this goddamn website. <laughs> Three fucking years. Do you know how much I hate the Fresh and Fit podcast to see their success? <laughs> <laughs> you know, but I knew that this was what I was going to do. Persistence. And I just, yeah, and, and persistence. And like Wraith said, focus. I said, I am just going to fucking figure this shit out and the world can fucking get out of my way. And I pulled it off, and I pulled it off in, in, in quite a, a fashion. Um, I think that's the thing with young people in general. I noticed there's a common theme with women, right? Um, younger women of this generation, they all say, I want a relationship. But few of these chicks have the backbone to stick it out when the going gets tough. It's incredible, man. Oh, it's incredible. Go ahead. Go ahead, Thor. What'd you say? There's no incentives for that. Yeah. For them to stick it out. There really isn't. Uh, the options for them seem limitless, especially when they're young. And of course, they're taught that in school. I mean, us humans, John, yeah. have this electrochemical brain and our interfaces, our eyes and our ears and our senses. And there is no firewall. You have to accept the programming. You cannot shut it out. If you're walking and you're listening to a podcast, you are receiving it. Your subconscious receives it. It's just the way it is. If you're looking at the TV, you get it. And so that's a lot of input to this computer that really isn't a very good multitask. <laughs> and it definitely, it, with, with these girls, for sure, you know, they are definitely not given any incentive to stick it out and to... Uh, well, they're trained to get instant gratification. Once again, we're looking at the battery situation again, right? Yep. And self-validation. And yet in the long term, what is the most fulfilling for them as a female? What did the universe create for them? Yep. You know, yeah. life, to give birth, to create a human. We cannot do that. It takes both of us. They do that. They live their life. And then, of course, they enter menopause and they're fulfilled. They have this family. There's a very big reward for them for that risk of childbirth. It's something us as men really can't describe in words. And and you're seeing society subvert that to where they don't get to have that. And you're seeing the the, the misery and the, the self-hatred uh, for these gals right now. You see it when they're going there to these really extended hoe phases. And then you see it once again when they hit the fear of missing out. And uh, it is perpetuated today. Uh, now, some, some will find a way out, but... Uh, Hey, look at our demographics right now. Do you realize worldwide and here in Japan knows this very well, even China, it has fallen in the U S to 1.6 or 1 1.8 mm -hmm. children per female. Do you realize that every female has to have everyone born has to have 2.4 children, every single one in order to maintain the population at its current rate really? yeah, That is a disaster headed towards us. Yep. And, and the thing is, right, I mean, the, I think the funniest thing is how um, girls, <laughs> modern girls, pretend that they're okay. Mm -hmm. And, like, they just keep, they keep a pretty mean poker face. But, like I said, 
<laughs> they have to. They have to, John. <laughs> they really do. Um, Laurent, our good friend, is in the house. 500 again. Super Chat says, self-validation used to be called locus of control. Oh, mm -hmm. e external locus meant being locked out of oneself. My Corporate. good man. Had yeah. I had lunch with Laurent today. Real good guy. Badass. Looking, looking very... Looking very brawny these days. He's doing a great job. I was a great friend. I'm honored to be a friend with that guy. Same here. Um, so, like, okay. So, we, obviously, we got an inner game crisis, right, guys? Um, how do we get? How do these dudes get out of this rut? Is, let's say they're broke. They can't join the inner game healing summit, and they just need some help. Well, you, or they, or they think they're on the fence. They're like, ah, maybe I'll join. Maybe I won't. Let me see what these guys bring to the table. Um, I'll, I'll lead first by saying this. I would just say, really, if I had to do anything, and again, this ties into not giving up, excuse me, not giving up, focus, determination. You guys seen my notebook. I'll pull it out again. When I used to write down, I, Jonathan Hogwood, consistently earned $10,000 a month net profit from the internet. I wrote that 10 times on a notebook every single day for five months in a row. People can't do that. The average person don't have the fucking attention span to do it for two days. They give up too easily. They I quit. recommend if you guys want something, clearly write it out in the present tense over and over and over again. If you can stick with that, that right there will open up a lot of doorways and you'd be surprised what happens when you stick something through like that? What are some other things you guys think of just guys get their inner game, inner world sorted out? Mark, you want to go first? Sure. Um, one thing would be good for them is to find a mentor. That may be difficult to do, but in a way it's easier now than it was when I was a kid because you can get a, like on, you can get online. There's a lot of YouTube creators. If you can find somebody that really, that you resonate with, that's really speaking something that, uh, you know, not just trying to get your money or trying to, Bad mouth women. Of course, you know, there's a lot of them out there like that, but somebody who can actually help you because it's it's just amazing. Of course, this is Buck Rogers stuff from when I grew up. I mean, Thorne right there, remember? It's like having to watch and that you can actually talk to somebody on. So this is incredible that we can actually, because for me to find a mentor when I was a kid, I had to actually go out and get a real person, which I, I had a couple of them when I was young and I had some when I was older, but they were real people. But now if you can't do that, and a lot of these guys are afraid, uh, to go out and actually meet people. They can get online and listen to some of these creators. And if they have the money, actually pay to get some mentorship or some guidance because it'll pay off down the road. And to touch on what you said about affirmations, I have affirmations I've been saying and reading twice a day for, I read them twice a day in the morning and the evening, and I'll say them during the day too. Maybe when things aren't going the way I think mm -hmm. they should. And I do them, I've done some of them for years it's amazing how people will, will realize they have to go to the gym for you know at least a month to even see a little bit of results mm -hmm. and maybe years like Thor knows and, and I know it takes time, but yet they'll do affirmations for a week and they quit and they say they don't work. They don't work because they don't work them. But you just have to get out. You have to find somebody to model, not to be exactly like them, but somebody to to use as a mold, as a, as a guide. We need a guide. If you're going to climb Mount Everest, and for a lot of these kids, being a man from where they're starting at is like climbing Mount Everest. You've got to have somebody that's been there and he can show you the way. Now, your way won't be exactly like his, but he can guide you along the way. You need a guide. Yep. It, it, it makes just common sense, right? Get, I mean, that's the life hack, right? For me, for example, I'm going to talk about my buddy Laurent, right? Laurent is a friend of mine in Tokyo and he has accomplished what I want to accomplish in life in a lot of areas, right? Particularly with his, his uh, business acumen. And I know that Laurent is older than me. He is wiser than me and he's smarter than me in a lot of areas. And I, I bring value to the table as well. You know, we talk about ways to optimize his health, you know, um, biological stuff and, relationship stuff and there's a, there's an equal value exchange there but he understands the value of hanging out with me and i understand the value of hanging out with him with the mentor because he's already been there he's done that he knows what to do and what not to do and that's what i think a lot of people you know the thing really makes me sick to my stomach 
is when people like to say those who cannot do teach. They like to say that fucking arrogant statement. And it's such a pretentious thing to say. To go to somebody and learn to do what they are doing is the most effective and efficient way to get something done. Because everything you want on this planet comes from a human. Exactly. So why not go to a human that has already accomplished what you want? Yeah, and that's the teaching thing is BS, man. Let me tell you, when you teach, you learn more about your subject. Exactly. Than anything else. I mean, I have a lot of experience in this, whether it's teaching line work or jujitsu. When I started to teach it, I had to delve deeper. Why? Because I had to connect with another human being and express what these physical and spiritual and emotional elements were that all went together. And by doing that, I got smarter. I got better. It's an amazing thing. It's a way to pay it forward. That's why I sit here today. It's not for you. It's for me. <laughs> it is for me. You know, and I, I'd like to add my two things to the guys that come here and they're not, they can't join up right now. What are they going to do? It's just like Mark said, find a coach, find a coach that fits the mold for you. It doesn't matter. You can change it. But if you don't have anything right now, you need to do two things. Number one, you do need some external validation. I'm going to say that everybody does need it. It's important. It's not discounted. You can overdo it, but you need to do it. So go get social, get out there and start being social. Do not isolate. That'll give you some external validation. Yeah. Sometimes it's uncomfortable, but it's going to give you some skills. You need that. Then the very next step, guys, make a decision. The decision is this, write it down. Be a better man today than you were yesterday and do whatever it takes to make it happen. Yes. That's it. Whatever it takes. Um, for me, for me, I think it'd be self-education. Okay. Start reading. Yep. You know, and start educating yourself in, you know, what you're looking to change in your life. <clears throat> Way too many guys are sitting there waiting for somebody to come out with a program that's going to fix their freaking problems. And it doesn't work that way. If anybody, anybody on this panel can tell you when we work with men, we are telling them this is hard work yeah. and it is hard work. You know, we, we didn't get where we were by waiting around for something to happen to us. We all took efforts to make something happen for us. Correct. Um, we got a $20 super chat by Hey M Yost 1999. He says requesting feedback from the panel about men having kids in their early 50s. See, Mark, you're the expert breeder, so I, I think you yeah. <laughs> Go ahead. I'd, be, I'd be glad to comment on that. Uh, I thought about hiring myself out as a surrogate uh, father, but uh, you know, <laughs> using my kids for, they're all pretty good looking, using them for advertisement. <laughs> That's been suggested to me. Okay. Uh, I see no problem. I've actually thought about maybe having another kid or two. Who knows? If I could, The only problem is find a woman that, that I would want to, take that chance with I actually thought about being going out of the country and maybe impregnating some woman out there and taking care of her until the kid got old enough. Cause then she can't get me because I've been married here four times. So I guess I would start off with this. If you're going to have kids here in the States with a woman, you got to be very careful because it's a 50, 50 chance. I think that it won't work out 70% chance, 70% that she will initiate the divorce. So that's really a big risk here. Um, but I tell you what, I think I'm a better father. I know I'm a better father in my 50s and I, and I was in my 40s and I ever would have been in my 20s. I was still out there screwing everybody in my 20s. So I had my first kid that I knew about at 36. I had a daughter before. And I'm not sure if she's my daughter. I never had the test, but she may be. Okay. But the other seven kids, I know for sure are mine because several of them I had tested. But um, the fertility thing, I don't think that's a problem. You know, Richard Gere just had two kids and he was about 70 years old. So. Um, and a lot of people think, oh, you're too old to have kids. You're going to be like the grandpa. I can do, if you take care of yourself, I can do anything. My kids and I work together. They're as tired at the end of the day as I am. I can spar with them. I work out with them. I box them. I can do anything they do. They get sore. They wake up. It'll keep you young because what happens when you get older, all you hear all your life is you're getting old. And everybody's quick to tell you if you hurt yourself, oh, you're not as young as you used to be. But it's not that. You forget that when you were young, you got hurt. You had aches and pains. But when you're around young people, you realize they complain, they get hurt, they got back problems, the same thing that you do at your age. Mm -hmm. But we just hear so much and it's like they're pushing. 
And then here in the U.S., I know the age is a big thing. It's where in other countries, you're not so much, uh, let's say, discriminated against. You're venerated. They, they, your age is, is not a – it makes no difference. Like my last girlfriend, she's like 22 now. So mm -hmm. it's like I don't even want to go out with girls that are over 24 because, well, because – well, you know, the numbers and the body count and all that. So yeah. I was going to comment on that earlier. I'll, I'll make it quick on that. But um, when I was young, if a girl had, if she was 20 and had five body count, that was high. My first, my first wife was a virgin. One of my first girlfriends had only been with one or two guys. And the guy that she was with before me was my mentor. Mm -hmm. And then there were other girls that had been, you know, two or three guys. I mean, like by 20 years old. I have a daughter, 15. She's got, she knows girls that have a, over a 10 body count at 14 years old. It's just incredible. Mm. What's even crazier, going back to that statement, is how chicks real, don't realize how like repulsive that is for men. And I've taught my daughter, I teach her about that and her value to maintain her value. And it's very important, but not. But they're, most girls and women are ignorant. They don't have a clue. Nobody tells them that. Mm -hmm. But it doesn't matter if it's fair. It doesn't matter. It's just the way society views it. If any of us go out and screw 100 girls, we're a badass. We're the man. But if a girl goes out and screws 20, she's a hoe. I, I was supposed to use that word. It's, but it's my channel. Don't worry. Okay. <laughs> she's, <laughs> she's cheap. Okay. She's loose. Yeah. Her value goes down. It's, it's not, I don't care if it's fair. Life isn't fair. Sometimes that's good. Sometimes it's not so good. It's just the way it is. You got to accept yeah. it. Mm -hmm. I think yeah. having kids in your fifties can be a good thing. Uh, for me, I just practice a lot. So mm -hmm. that's about it. <laughs> um, I don't have any kids. Wraith, you want to add on that? When yeah. You had your kids in your 30s, right? Huh? You had your kids when you were in your thirties? I had my kids when I started at 17. Oh, <laughs> I had them early too. Missed like 13 years. Sorry there. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, it's just not for me right now. I mean, I, I don't, I'm not saying if I got a girl pregnant, I wouldn't raise the kid and stuff like that. I would, you know, but it's just not for me right now. I'm having too much fun being what I am right now, who I am. Mm. But like I said, I, I wouldn't have a problem with it, Yep. but it's not something I'm out, I'm going out trying to do. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Well, you know, I think that was a good question. Thanks so much for that uh, super chat. Um, let me ask you guys this, right? We all watch red pill content, manuscript content and shit. What do you think guys are too focused on? And what do you think they should really focus on? I, I'll go first on this. Guys mm -hmm. are focused on getting laid mm -hmm. and not... Um, making themselves something that someone, you know, making themselves someone that someone would want to lay, mm. you know, mm. and, and like I said, you know, you know me, I I've sat through all of these, you know, last three, four years. And it's just frustrating for me that I, I know there's gotta be some, some focus, something, something that a guy can focus on to make him move forward. Mm -hmm. But like I said, to me, that whole I got to get laid thing, <laughs> that's looking for external validation. Yeah. And there's no way, and, and you know yourself because we've talked about this, there's no way you can convert that into internal validation. Mm -hmm. At some point, you have to realize, yeah, this is fucked up. I've got to focus on me. And, yeah. you know, because if not, you wallow in your mommy issues like we were talking about. Yep. Dude, so spot on. A lot of guys, Get into the red pill space to get into the manosphere. There's two types of guys, guys that learn how to get pussy and like guys who don't. But the thing is, it gets to a point where these guys start using pussy as medicine. Yeah. And that comes with a slew of problems because the, the backbone behind that is a fucking broken inner person, inner game, broken self-esteem. And guess what happens when you're a broken person? Who you think you're going to fall in love with? And you're going to be a healthy girl. It's going to be a broken girl. And then you got two broken people in love, causing all sorts of trauma, causing all sorts of shit, and fucks them up. Focusing, don't get me wrong. I, I'm pretty sure it's a unanimous decision. Us on the panel, we are in favor of pussy. However, right? All, all in favor, I. <laughs> you know, um, 
But, you know, the, the thing is, at the same time, you can't use it as medicine. That's why I always say money, muscles, game, frame. The core four, right? That's what every man needs to focus on. Money, muscles, game, frame. And um, moving forward, it, it's I, – I see a lot of guys – I mean, it breaks my heart because, we know, you guys are all very successful financially. You know, you guys will do well for yourselves. None of you – I mean, like, I mean, Mark showed up in a goddamn suit for Christ's sakes. You know, he's – y'all are doing great. <laughs> my mama but, taught uh, me how to dress. <laughs> <laughs> um, but it breaks my heart and it, it devastates me when I see a guy in his 40s and 50s who doesn't have his shit together financially. And I just – and I, I know – and this is going to hurt some feelings, but you got to be a fucking man and deal with it. I know something's off up here when that happens. In addition to that, I see a lot of guys, a lot of guys who choose that player lifestyle and they fuck and they fuck and they fuck. And then they're 40, they're 50, they're broke, they have nothing. And they're just like, you know, where, where did I go? With my life? There's more to it than just that. I mean, you just ask the question, what do you guys focus on? Yeah, it is the poon, but. You know, as you get into the red pill, you're given insights into female sexual dynamics that you can use to your advantage. But what I see guys really focusing on is the materialistic side as well. After they are successful with the women, I start seeing a broadcast of lifestyle. They start spending their money on silly little things. They start to get some success. You know, um, that's a two edged sword right there. You can get addicted to doing that. And then, like you say, here you're at your 40s, you're broke. You know, uh, you're a little older. How is your life? You know, you've ran through <clears throat> numerous hoes, so to speak. And then what is your legacy after that? What does your Rolex buy you in the long run? Yeah. Sits on a shelf. It's beautiful. Yeah. Does it get you more poon? Maybe. Yep. That reminds me of, uh, here's one for your Sunday sermon, John. He who consorts with harlots squanders his wealth. Oh, you got, a, you got a you got a chapter and a verse for me on that one? No, uh, that's in Proverbs, I think. But I don't. Know. <laughs> anyway, he who sorry that one more time. He, he who he who consorts with harlots mm. squanders his wealth. Oh my! There's God. a lot of good wisdom in that that old black book. I like it for that. But um, we were talking about focus. You know, it's it's kind of ironic that people focus on getting getting laid. When in reality, if they would focus on their purpose, their vision, whatever that happens to be, they mm. wouldn't have to look for women. Women look for them. Yes. I related back to when I was younger in my teens. I had more women than I knew what to do with, mm. but I was riding my Harley Davidson, and that was my most important thing. A woman wouldn't sit on my bike without permission. If she did, I told her to get her ass off. Yep. And my lifestyle, I had a steady girlfriend then also, but I was always out sleeping with other women. You know what I told her? I said, you know, I always come home to you. Mm. And I had girls because my purpose was to travel, to party, to, it wasn't a very good purpose, but in my motors, that lifestyle, I seen the movie Easy Rider. I wanted to be like those guys. And I was. And then after that, I got into boxing. That was my focus. After that, it was triathlons. And then I got into boxing again later, but all through my teens and twenties, Women were not my focus, and I had women leaving notes on my car, chasing me down. People's, my friends' girlfriends were trying to be with me. I mean, I could go on and on about it, but they never were my main focus. They were a, a compliment or an addition to my life. So if these guys, if they want to get women, what they need to do is not focus on, you guys know this, not focus on women, but focus on something bigger than themselves or something that, that engulfs them or, or they can not obsess about, well, almost obsessed about, but really get into. That's what they need. Something that helps their life, improves their life. Mm. Yeah. And I, and I think, you know, it, it comes to, I mean, I just happen to be wearing a shirt, right? Pay the costs, be the boss, oh, yeah. right? That's yeah. the thing. You know, you want to, what, what did they used to say back in the day? You want to be the man, you got to beat the man. You, know, you got yeah. to come and take that title. And that's the thing. I saw something in the chat here, right? Harry Maguire Jr. says, what if you keep trying but fail? You That's just good. keep trying. That's good. That's That's back good. Up. Yep. Dude. That's good. Everybody guys, here, they learn more from their failures than they did their successes. I you failed know, so many times. I'm telling you, I've been married four times. I've lost everything two or three times. I had to leave the, I had to leave the country because they were going to arrest me here. And then I had to leave that country because they were going to arrest me there. 
I mean, I lost everything, kids and everything. I had my kids taken away, and here I am for the last 10 years, single or 11 years, with my five kids, raised them up. My business is great. I have, I'm with you guys here, and that's something I wanted to point out, too. We didn't just, all of us didn't just get up and decide, well, we're all going to be, let me see, we're going to be with John and Wraith. And it's because we had a vision, we had affirmations, we had a purpose, we seen this, and we were all drawn together. Yes. We didn't plan this. I mean, it was planned by you, but I mean, six months ago, this all came together because of the persistence of Wraith, Thor, and John, and myself. Yes. This started a long time ago. Many people want to know, how's it going to happen? No, just take the first step. I love Martin Luther King's, you don't have to see the whole staircase, just take the first step. And many people are afraid to take the first step because they can't see how it's going to come to pass. Yep. You don't have to worry about that have the balls to step out there in the unknown. Yep. And that's the thing, right? For me, <clears throat> you know, I what I've noticed with guys, I'll just use women as an example, right? They're like, okay, so like I, it, I need her to look at me and I need her to give me like indicators of interest. <laughs> and I think that's why body language mastery is so popular because it really does teach you how to read a woman's body language and give you like kind of like the indicators if she's interested or not. But – they want to have everything perfect. Let, okay, let's be honest here. Show of hands. How many of you had a woman throw a drink in your face? Yeah, I, <laughs> I, had pour one, I had her pour one on me. It wasn't in my face. <laughs> there you go. You know? Does What's a that? The jar count? <laughs> <laughs> um, but, you know, I have been slapped by chicks. I've been had a drink thrown on my face. I've had girls laugh at me when I approach them, you know. But the thing is this. The thing is, if you fail, you are failing forward because each failure produces feedback as to why you did not succeed. And so once you have these you know, these, these compounding failure feedbacks, you're able to build a foundation which you can launch into actual success. I mean, you know, for example, right, when I, I, I talk about it all the time, when I lived in Hawaii, I failed the taxi test six times in a row, six times. You understand how humiliating it was to go home to my girlfriend at the time. And I'll tell you that that six time I failed it, she looked at me and she's like, this guy's a loser. I dumped her, but uh, <laughs> don't feel bad. I failed the pinbox, which cost four hundred fifty bucks three freaking times before I. You know, died. but that seventh time I fucking passed it, <sighs> and that in the first day I drove my cab. I mean, this was two thousand fourteen. I made seven hundred dollars cash in Hawaii, and for me that was payday. And I, you know, and then from there I went home and I always took that stack of cash and I gave it to her. I was like, here, count today's money count today's money you know just just so that, just let her let her know you know you doubted me now count my fucking money and make me dinner right yeah. and, and that's the thing even if your woman doubts you even if your friends doubt you you know when i told people i was going to go to japan people thought i was a goddamn lunatic when i quit my fortune 500 job here in, in tokyo and i'm like i'm going to be a youtuber that talks about sex and make a million dollars they're like all right psycho you know <laughs> um when charlie was like I'm gonna I'm gonna fucking quit. And I'm gonna talk about it, you know magic internet money. They laughed at him too, but Charlie said, "Fuck you guys. Who's laughing now? We're yeah. the boss." You know what I mean? But guys are afraid. They want everybody to approve of their lifestyle. They They're want their friends to approve. Think of them. Yeah. They are the road to success failing. is pay. The road to success is paved with failure. I'm sure y'all have heard that one. Yes. And it's true. Yes. It's so important. You got as a man. You got to I mean, look, look at uh, look at Thomas Edison, right? He failed 10,000 fucking times making that light bulb and he reframed it. He just said, I didn't fail 10,000 times. I found 10,000 ways not to make the light bulb. Exactly. It's a perception. It's how you want to look at things. Well, you know, that's what I, it's critical. I mean, that is an amazing thing because perception is key to even regulating are the reality in our lives day to day. I love that saying, by the way, with the, uh, that Thomas Edison came up with. Go yeah. ahead, Wraith. When I, when I talk to you, I mean, I tell them, you got to go out and create opportunities for yourself. That's what life is about, mm -hmm. going out and creating opportunities. Yep. And then you make choices from those opportunities that create other opportunities. Mm -hmm. I never talk about you go out and fail. Mm. 
you create an opportunity. Yep. That, that opportunity may not be the thing that you want or need at the time that you think you might may want or need, but it mm -hmm. probably is. Right. You yeah. got to have a, you got to have a goal. I believe you got to have a direction to go into because otherwise you're like a ship on the ocean without a rudder. You're blown around this way and that way. You have no destination. You're not going, and you may not end up where where you think you want to be. It'll either be there or something better. But if you don't take off, you can't be guided by the universe, by God, whatever you believe in. Most people, less than one percent, don't have a written goal. I have them written down so I can see them because a lot of people don't write their goals down because it becomes tangible. It's a reality when you look at it. But if you got it in your head, it's not quite as tangible and you don't feel quite as responsible for making it happen. But you can set the goal. And we all have desires within us, but we're afraid. Like I said, we're afraid to do them. We're afraid if we try what are people think. Those people don't pay our bills. Those people don't brush our teeth in the morning. They don't look at you in the mirror. Yep. Screw them, people. What do you want to do? You have something inside of you that only you can do, and you know what it is, but you're afraid to try it because you're afraid you won't be able to or whatever. But if you don't do that, that will take you in the direction of what you really want to do. Yep. You've got to have something to move towards. Yeah, and I think that what you said is so real, and it ties into affirmations. And I think it's in the Bible, too. They say when you have a goal, like inscribe it on the tablet. Something, you know. Yeah, I, used I, know. To, I can't remember. Yeah, it. There, there used there's a guy. His name is Uriah Faber, right? He was a former WEC uh, featherweight champion. They call him the California Kid. Um, did a pretty good MMA career, right? And he used to say, "There's something about when you take a goal from your head, and you actually write it out into into reality." He says, "You're actually creating it." That's the first step of creation. Right. Everything starts up here, but then you put it out here, and then you start taking actions to make it happen. Putting it out there is an action in itself. And I'll tell you, one I did think of is without a vision, people perish. Mm -hmm. And without a vision, you will perish. If not die physically, you'll die internally because we have to expand. We are The universe is expanding. We have to expand, and we only expand when we're taking action in the direction of our goals. And so what is it like in the beginning there was the word mm -hmm. okay. yeah and what is the word the word was being able to communicate yeah. and to being able to think past your base needs mm -hmm. and that's what you know we we have that ability mm -hmm. yes we have desires and and there's nothing wrong with our desires to have more to to accomplish if we didn't have that we would have died out a long time ago mm. yeah or, can I make um, a comment on failures, please? Yeah, Real please, please do. It's important because I think guys are afraid to fail. They're so they, that's the biggest thing. People yeah. are afraid to fail, and it when is. they when they're afraid to fail, a they don't even try, or b they assume failure is near, and they give up. They run away. They 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 they, they flip the chessboard, you know. And and people just like I don't know, just people are, just yeah. people become weaker. You know what I mean? It's a whole show of failure. It's such an important topic because, you know, one of the things that, that I've taught students for a long time, and this comes from my industry as well, the things you focus on, you're, you're going to make happen. So if you're mm. a failure, what's going to happen? It's like when you're riding a motorcycle and I'm teaching them to ride a motorcycle. It's like you drive where you look at. If I'm driving down the road and I'm distracted, guess where my bike starts to head? Right into the freaking curb. If I stare at the curb, I'm going at the curb. So if I stare at my fear of failure, I'm going to steer right towards it. Mm -hmm. I'm going to manifest it as reality. Um, so, um, and another part of it is perception. We say perception is reality, someone said. Now, I'm going to mm -hmm. think that's a useful term, but I'm going to make arguments in our course that that is not actually true. And you guys mm -hmm. will love. It. But aside from that, and that's when, when you compare it to objective reality. But back to failure, I would not be sitting here today if it wasn't for failure that I mm. feel, right? It came from nowhere. I got sick. I had a tooth infection for eight months. I thought it was stress. I destroyed my supervisor job. I had to cut back. This sickness lasted. It nearly destroyed my marriage. I didn't know I was sick. Then I got diagnosed. I got fixed. And out of that, doors of opportunities present themselves and new goals presented themselves out of all of that. It was almost like I destroyed the old life. And out of that old life, there was fertile new ground 
you know, it had been fertilized in place before me, uh, I became healthy again because it shocked me because I got so sick. I got so skinny. You know, mm -hmm. I nearly lost my wife. I had to reconsider. Why did I do that? Because I lost attraction. I lost mm -hmm. my ability to attract yeah. my most favorite human being. So out of all of that, I made a decision about that. <laughs> To cry about this failure and say oh, boo boo hoo what happened to me it's like no i'm gonna say fuck that like the little the little mouse that's got its head in the cat's jaws and he's reaching around and grabbing the cat by the throat so he can't swallow him that's what i'm gonna fucking do you know yeah. i go down kicking and screaming i'm gonna look at the opportunities that now are in front of me from these failures that i didn't see coming yep but i'm going to you grow from it and i'm going to accept these opportunities so every failure presents two or three opportunities if you're willing to look for it yep. now that's where perception is reality and you can make the argument you need, need to expand your ability to perceive what's out there and uh and then uh, gain perspective on those failures so let me ask a question how many of you guys here how many have you actually even see failure anymore uh what do you mean I mean, I, I don't look at life as in successes and failures. Okay. I don't, I don't even think about failure. Interesting. Elaborate on that. What do you mean? <laughs> well, when I'm trying to res resolve something or trying to solve something, um, I accept that there's going to be a solution. And it may not be the solution I want, but there's a solution. Mm. The solution I, I don't want, I don't look at that as a failure. Mm. I look at that as ways to come up with other solutions that changes the outcome. Mm. It's all about changing the outcome. I don't, I don't wake up every morning anymore, and I haven't since I was probably my thirties, and thinking about what what is what is going to be the outcome that's going to fail today. Mm. I don't look at it that way. I don't look at life that way. Mm. Because oh. if I did, it would be something negative. I'm always focusing on. Yeah, let me let me expand on that. I, I agree. I don't necessarily I use the word failure, but I don't I never thought about it till Ray said that. But I don't really think about this failure either. I think about things I'm going to do. Some of the jobs I have I've done for years and at night before I start a new job, sometimes I'll be very nervous. And even I don't know why there's a fear there. But if it wasn't for that, life would be boring. I did a big job this summer and one of the biggest jobs my company's ever done. I had to go down there and bid and rebid three or four or five times. And I finally got the job and I was afraid I might lose my ass on it. Now, I, that was the fear I had. I didn't let it dominate me. But it was funny because once the contract was signed and we got the deposit, and the, the first day I went down there to start it, it didn't look near as big and daunting. I mean, it was almost like the building had changed. It was incredible. We were on it for two months, had a crew of about five, five, six people there. But I never thought about failing. Sometimes I thought about, am I bidding this right? But yeah, race right. I look at things more like, how can, you know, how's this going to work? I may look for the possible uh, difficulties just so I can prepare for them, but not too much. Because then you're, I think um, um, Thor said, it's a psychological principle. He didn't say it this way, but you did say, whatever you focus on grows. So if mm -hmm. I focus on the fear you have to eliminate the fear and try to see yourself succeeding and everything going well. Mm. And actually did. We made more money on that job than any job I've ever done. Worked out great. Everybody was happy. Yeah. But it was something I had never done before. And honestly, I'll tell you, this is what happens too. A lot of times before you make a big breakthrough. Okay. They accepted the contract, sent me a message the night before the next day he calls me and said, well, they, they accepted your contract, but they don't like the terms of payment. Mm. And I got pissed off and I thought, well, so I was, I thought to myself, well, you son of a bitch, you didn't accept the contract then. And I was going to say, you know what? Cause that fear was still there. Am I going to be able to do this? Is this going to turn out? Okay. Is my bid? Okay. My fear was, uh, so I, I wanted to tell them, uh, you know, just screw it. Get somebody else. I didn't do that though. I talked to the guy and we arranged terms and it turned out that that was probably better for me also. So it all worked out, but my pride and my fear wanted to say, you know what? Fuck it. Just get somebody else. But I didn't act on that. So a lot of times we will self-sabotage and I've done that in my life before we get, you know, right before we get a big breakthrough on something or a real something that's really going to be good for us. So that's where the inner game comes in. We really have to be aware of what's going on inside us. And we talked about mommy issues. 
I think we all have, I don't know. I know I had some mommy issues I dealt with. <laughs> you project them onto the women you're with, but, uh, yep. and then women have daddy issues, but it's really important. And we're talking about in our game to look within you. Everybody wants to point the finger, right? Most people, but there's three of them pointing back at you. So if you're pointing the finger at somebody else, you need to look back at yourself and see where you're responsible. As long as I blame you and everybody else for my problems, guess what? My life's never going to get any better because guess what I am? I'm like ever, most people here in the U.S. I'm a victim. Yeah. You know, the victim mindset. As long yeah. as I'm a victim, I can't do anything, right? So I would rather be a victor than a victim. Yeah. I just think, um, yeah, this is really the most useful tool because we have what I mean, look. We got we have a fucking supercomputer in our hands. We got all the food in the world. We got money. We got houses. We got the easiest really? fucking jobs. But everybody internally is so fucked up. The majority of people, the norm is a person that is psychologically fucked up. There are more fucked up people than there are normal people, in my opinion. And I don't think it used to be like this. Uh, not to this degree. I don't think so. I think it's more of a Western world problem. I mean, I've been in third world countries. I lived in one for six years. And they are happier because every day is a struggle for them. And mm. you see the women out there washing clothes on the pila till noon. And that's mm. like a, you know what a pila is? It's like an old washboard. Yep. I lived in a place where we had to wash our clothes on the lake. We had to walk down and wash our clothes in, in, on a lake in a rock. I mean, these people are busy. In the, in the Western world, it's so easy. Like you said, they don't, they're not busy. They're not taking action. They don't have to. Everything is, I can just call up right now and get DoorDash or whatever to bring my food. I don't even have to, heck, I don't even have to get up to go get it hardly. So everything is just so easy. There's no struggle. There's, we need physical activities. You guys know that's very important. We don't have enough physical Everything's made so easy. Nobody has to work anymore. It's, it's ironic. You have to go to the gym to work out because we don't work out. We don't work hard enough to, I mean, I like working out, but I work hard too. So I do both, but mm -hmm. it's important physically, mentally, emotionally, and spiritually. All those are aspects we need to, to keep, keep uh, in tune, let's say. Well, that's where the depression comes from and all that stuff, because, you know, I, I wrote an essay a while back and about happiness happiness is a celebration of struggle mm. yeah good point and happiness is a prelude to the next struggle it's just yeah. that, that's the way we're designed yeah you know and if you if you if your level for happiness is so low and happiness is achieved so rapidly and so easily then it's got to be, it's depressing. Mm -hmm. It depresses all, you know, all those brain chemicals and stuff that, that, that take to make you happy mm -hmm. and to succeed and all that. And I, I think that's one of the main reasons way too many people are depressed. Yeah. Because there is no struggle for them. Mm -hmm. it's, it, it, it goes to that thing. If we don't, if we don't have struggle, we create struggle. Crisis. We create crises. You yeah. ever see? Uh, I mean, it's, it reminds me of the quote from Fight Club: "We have no great war. We have no great depression. Our war is a spiritual war, and right. our great depression is our lives. Right? Like, it, life is too easy, and so you have to. That this is why, as a man, I, to be honest with you, I, I think when you guys said men are built to struggle, and to be honest with you, I think yeah. I've kind of that kind of flicked the light bulb on for me because. You know, for example, right, Sunday I was just chilling, staying home all day, watched the new Matrix, ate pizza. On paper, should have been a good day, but I started, like, feeling depressed. I thought I was feeling like, what am I doing? You know, here I am in a fucking penthouse, beautiful, my girl's with me, she's gorgeous, um, you know, sex, pizza, movies all day. And I'm like, uh, God, I feel like, I don't know. And I was so bummed out, I kind of fucking <laughs> talked about it on my, my Sunday show, and I just realized, like, we think that we want to like chill out and relax and put, put our fucking feet up and eat bonbons all day, have women feed us grapes. And this is going to be like fantastic. It's like, no, you That's need as a man, man. You need to do something. It's what we're biologically built as, you know what I mean? 
and sitting down. I mean, women are okay with like sitting around lounging all day and you know going to tea time and chatting and doing women things. That's what women should be doing, right? Just being you know part of the community, taking care of the kids, cleaning the house. That's like a thing that they are very happy doing. But when a man starts doing that shit, and I'm fucking you know I'm successful. I'm a successful man. I don't have a reason to be depressed, but like your biology kind of takes over and it just kind of clicked for me. And, you know, that's, I'm kind of get back in the momentum of things and moving forward. And, you know, the, this, the summit's launching on Thursday, everything's coming together, you know, meeting up with Laurent, talk about some big business moves we're making there, but not making progress and not expanding, as you said, as a man really fucks you up. And then what happens? What are we doing with our kids? You probably seen this all the time. We're, we're raising kids with a fucking iPad. Here you go, little fucker. Just, just put the, take the iPad. Leave daddy and mommy alone. We gotta pop our pills. We gotta drink our wine and be Baby awful. Center. Oh, and we're training those young men exactly that quote from Fight Club that you just said. The one that goes with it is we're training these young men basically to buy shit we don't need to impress people we don't like. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yep. It's true, and I think that's why you know going back to things. Um, it's good as a man to have a goal. It's good to be working towards something because I just don't, I don't think people are not typically happy in like a, like with stability, but in a, like, you know, stability is good. You know what I mean? But like, not in a bad way. Like, you know, I'm not saying like go fucking get a Coke habit or something, but you know, you need, you need to be working towards something. You need to be, I just think that's what we are as human. That's how everything got here. That's how this building was built. So the fucking pyramids were built. That's why we have iPhones. There was some man who's like, I got to build something. I got to do some shit. You know what I mean? And that's the thing for guys. Inner game. The the rock solid principle of inner, inner game is confidence. That's what basically all inner game is. Confidence in yourself. Knowing that you're enough. You're good enough just the way you are, and if you want to make yourself better, that's good too, right? Real confidence. Where does confidence come from? Confidence comes from competence, and competence comes from achievements. You, you become competent, you achieve a goal, and then you're like confident, right? Because like, you know, the first time you do something, right? For example, like uh, I'll use uh, sparring as an example, right? The first time you land a solid right hand on someone and you staunch them, and you're like, oh, shit. I, I clocked that motherfucker and he he's hurt. You know what I mean? It gives you more confidence next time you set up and you're going in the fight. Like, I got a good right hand. I could put this motherfucker down, right? It by, by learning the technique and then executing it confidently, this gives you confidence. Now you walk around, you're like, oh, I've got a good right hand. Same thing if you, like, build a business or approach a girl. And you know, hey, I know how to approach a girl. I did it like this. I talked to her. I said this, that, and that. And this is what happened, right? So it's really all based in taking action and working towards something inaction will cause you to have like mental turmoil and you don't want that it's not good at all not at all at all at all um, yeah i agree i agree um he was talking about confidence it reminded me of when i used to go to the gym i started out in a little town called hannibal fighting up there and it, well, there were some tough guys but not like like there was when I went to St. Louis and started working out down there. Those guys used to knock me down three times a week, beat the shit out of me. I was working out with guys that were ranked like number one. This one, I was an amateur, number one in the nation, and some pros that were in the top rank, top 10. And they would drop me, and I would go home some nights. I'd have like this white spot in front of my head, wondering if I was going to wake up the next day. My nose is all sweat. But Going through all that, you got to be a little crazy, but going through all that now through the years later, and I fought amateur and professionally, I can go anywhere in the world and I've been able to protect myself, protect my woman. I mean, when someone tried to assault me, I could drop them. I don't have to think about it. It's I have a confidence. And what I tell guys too is, you know, get into a gym, do, do something, some kind of contact sport to where you know how to handle yourself and because women want to feel was want to feel safe with the man, you don't mm -hmm. have to go beat everybody up. But there's just something about the way you you carry yourself when you know that you can handle any situation. I've been robbed with guns. I've had guys. Yeah, I could go on and on, but and I handled those situations. But I don't have to go out like I said, beat people up. But just having that confidence from achieving those things and doing those things is 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 something that. 
that, you know, it's not like having a car. That That's what men, men need to do things to where they feel that confidence that they can protect themselves and take care of them and handle themselves in any situation is so important. Yeah. Yeah. It's so, it's really so, so, so important to really just get your inner world sorted out. Um, and that's what we're going to be doing at the inner game healing summit. These gentlemen are going to be part of it. Two, three of us will be speakers. Mark will be attending, uh, running support in the chat and adding, uh, running Q and a support as well. Don't forget, uh, we're going live on Thursday, which happens to be episode I don't know if I'm going to label it episode 500, but I think I'm going to save it for Friday. But anyways, innergamehealing.com. Get on the waiting list right here. Put your email address right here. Hit get on the waiting list. And that is it. I mean, we are going to be working hard to push things forward. And really, we're actually working on making some lasting change. I said it, you know, I said it before. I said it on Rule Zero. I'm the guy on Rule Zero that I call myself the workshop. You know, you can sit there, you can do all the, sh the the talking in the chat and the super chats and anything. But if you actually want to be the man, you actually want to show up and learn from the mentors in the Masculine Empowerment Network how to be the man. We are starting off with Inner Game Healing. So come on down. Going live this February 24th. You'll get a private email and an invite there. Until then, guys, we'll see you here tomorrow at 9 a.m. Eastern Standard Time for the Tokyo Crypto Show. Gentlemen, thank you so much for showing up. We'll see you guys later. Peace out.